Hey guys, good to see you again. Weekly webcast for all the SOP guys by a couple of SOP guys. So glad that you're here. I'm Lee Kelso. I'm Mark Romisher. And this week we have a guest from a company that's definitely helping keep our SOPs on the road, Orio. And that's right. Oh, go ahead. No, you're on it, Mark. You roll. <laughs> We're going to be having uh, Jeff Gornflow here, uh, who is a uh, uh, guest from Orio. Tell us more about that, uh, Lee. Uh, Jeff is the National Technical Service Manager for the company that really has taken the place as close as you can get today to the Saab factory guys. And and that is uh, the, the folks behind a website that a lot of us use, Original Saab. So we're going to learn more about exactly what is that relationship today? How did all this come about? What can they do for us and we're going to lead you through the website and show you some pretty cool stuff there. So let's bring him to the screen and welcome Jeff Gornflow. Jeff, thanks for joining us. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, Lee. Hi, Mark. Thanks for bringing me in. We appreciate you uh, bringing a Rio into the uh, talk, and uh, hopefully we can enlighten your guests. I want to do that. So uh, you have an interesting story. You were with Saab back in the pre-GM days, and then you carried over into Saab GM, and now you're in what came after Saab as the company after the bankruptcy and all of that happened. So you've seen a lot of culture changes over your years. Tell me about Oreo today. Did I get it right? You're as close to Saab factory as we're going to get. Yes, we are. We are the factory now. Um, basically, in the bankruptcy or post-bankruptcy era of, of GM after the breakup and then the um, bankruptcy that we had, um, the car company was split up into a car company and a parts company. And we became um, the parts company. And I was very fortunate to actually move over to the same position, hence the uh, technical manager still for North America, um, mm -hmm. which I did for um, GM before that. So there's been at least a, a continuation on, especially with our um, our stores that we that, we, that I manage that have, um, you know, so we've had that relationship going now for you know close to 15 years plus. But yeah, I started out as a technician in a little store in Knoxville, Tennessee, walked in carrying a toolbox, 1985, um, worked a, a, around actually in, in the uh, early 90s, moved to Atlanta, uh, which was the headquarters at the time. Uh -huh. um, again, worked for um, a couple of the stores there and just was really always um, close with, you know, friendly with most of the guys out there, Walt Loss and, and some of the other guys. Um, mm. But that led to at some point i went off and um had my own shop for about eight years and then i went to work for gm and um mm -hmm. that basically led to, to this tour we're at today but the gm ride was was a fun experience that was um it, you know their their corporate culture is a little bit different so it was a little bit more regimen regimen um than what you would normally see um in, in the sob world, you know, the, the free thinking mm -hmm. was not, not, um, not there. Um, so it, it was really a refresher, a refresh or a fresher pressure, I should say, when mm -hmm. we split off in 2010, um, to, uh, form sob cars again. Now, like mm -hmm. I said, after the bankruptcy, a Rio, um, basically was formed because the parent company sob, um, were allowed to use the name for licensing and some things, but they didn't want us to continue to use the name as far as the company. So in, in an mm -hmm. effort to, to have more of a global appeal, because we do, uh, you know, obviously we're, we are still a worldwide company, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. We have, um, um, trying to think of how many different offices. Sweden is still our headquarters, but we have, you know, there's Great Britain, there's Germany, I think there's um, South Korea. There's still quite a few places that still have oh, wow. um, representation. So it, it, it's, it's still quite large considering the fact that, you know, here we are, even at this point now we're, um, you know, 10, 10 years removed and, mm -hmm. and still doing strong. We've actually had uh, last year was one of our best years to date. So that was always a, a good piece. So are you making parts uh, anymore or are you just kind of managing the relationships between suppliers? It's a little bit of both. We, you know, Saab has never, as far as, you know, body parts, that's the stuff they've always built. And so we, mm -hmm. we um, actually, that was one of the first things we did when we went um, mm -hmm. and, and, and got separate. And even, even after, um, the, the uh, bankruptcy is we still have a, a relationship with Nevs and they actually um, own a lot of the tooling. Mm -hmm. So we're able to buy and sell to them, which, which helps us as well. 
um, so, so yeah, we still actually, you know, there's still stuff we produce. A lot of it is still, you know, like I said, Saab has always um, bought a lot of parts from a lot of companies. So that's been, a, you know, a, a piece that's always um, been something to manage. And that's something we continue to do today. Well, that's one, one of the things that... Wanda, that yeah, go ahead, Mark. Oh, that's one thing I want to touch on, Jeff, is that you said you had your best year last year. And just learn about this relationship between Ohio and Nevs. I mean, does this indicate that there is a resurgence of Saab popularity, you think, based on, you know, the volume of business that you've been seeing? Um, I, Nevs, as far as they're concerned, they, they've mm -hmm. moved on from, from the Saab portion. Okay. They're, they're into um, more, I don't know if you've seen some of their stuff, they're really into the mobility um, and actually, I think I've done doing some ride share stuff. But electric continues to be their focus, and, and will remain to be so. Okay. Um, so, but 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 they but you know just their size. Um, sometimes we're still able, believe it or not, to find a little stash of parts that they've had somewhere that they didn't realize they even had. Oh, really? That's huh. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. Hey, we've got your website up on the screen right now, which is how most people are going to interact with you. But before we go into the website, and there's some really cool stuff that I'll bet you guys didn't know is out there. Uh, and uh, we're going to start with one of Mark's cars and do a little discovery on that. <laughs> uh, but before I get there, uh, so your relationship with the authorized service centers. So there are still guys, even though factory, you know, there's no SOB dealerships anymore. There's still guys who are authorized service centers, right? Yes, correct. We still have, and I, I meant to get that number and I failed to, but I, rough number is 150 um, of, of our um, stores that are that are we, what we designate as authorized or official um, mm -hmm. service centers. Um, they get um, special rates and parts, um, extra support. They get me, which um, you know <laughs> that, that that's a that's a big that's a big plus on on some cars. Um, sometimes that phone call can um, make you or break you. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, if uh, if you've got a problem with one of your sobs right now, and you know, what'd you call it earlier, Jeff? Stump the chump. Let's if you got a if you got a question and something's, <laughs> something's driving you crazy and you need a little hand, uh, Jeff's here. We can we can take that uh, support question. Just use the chat screen there, and uh, we'll we'll get that done. All right. Hey, so I want to yeah. go back to uh, to your website for a second, and this is something I think is really I interesting and important. Is you have this uh, recall lookup. So tell me about this, and while you do that, I'm going to put the VIN in on one of Mark's cars. We'll see what we can find out. Yeah, sure. This is our, our, our recall feature, and basically we built this into a database, and we, we tie this into all of our recalls and because they're all tied to VINs. That's, that's the one thing that, that, that's um, great about being you know, the, the manufacturer. We, we have all that data. Um, so uh, as you see here, Mark can put his VIN in, and then it'll spit it out, and it'll say, you know, if you have a recall, if – um, and it can oh, be wow. confusing at times because if you don't have a recall, it'll just, it just won't really return anything. Um, yeah. But um, if if there is, no matter the age of the vehicle, it, it will tell you, and and we can um, make arrangements with the um, calling number there and get oh, wow. you taken care of. So you just put in the last eight digits of your VIN, and Mark, look at that. You've got a seatbelt recall. <laughs> Great. I need a seatbelt <laughs> replacement. Awesome. <laughs> Hey, you know, two uh, you must have points. a convertible. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's convertible. Oh, wow. What's, yep. the, what's the details on this recall, Jeff? Uh, the seat belt is where an issue where they had uh, some of the retractors were sticking. Mm -hmm. And um, so that, that was really it. It was just a retractor issue. If, if you don't notice it, then you don't have an issue. Otherwise, you would, you know, have that big flappy belt laying around you and you. You, you oh, would gotcha. instantly, yeah. Most most sob owners don't go that route. That's nothing we don't see typically. They're very yeah. safety conscious. Yeah, I bet so. So anyway, you uh, as it says here, schedule your free recall. And uh, so is they're they're going to drive you to they're going to push Mark to go to one of the authorized service centers. Is that right? Is that how that works? Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. They'll we'll try to locate someone in his area, um, and then basically you'll you'll call that number or, or email however you'd like to do it. You'll speak with Stephanie, our customer assistance girl. Mm -hmm. or, or I should say, not our customer assistance person. She's a great person. Actually, mm -hmm. she should be at the convention uh, on Saturday, I believe, if uh, any of our audience is going to be there. So if you come up and, and meet us. But um, Stephanie will, will coordinate with the owner and with the local shop 
and um, try to get them taken care of. Cool. So uh, I'm now putting in Mark's VIN on uh, one of his cars so that uh, you can see this whole VIN decoder and what it tells you. I think some guys are going to find this very helpful. So you just pop in your VIN right there. Uh, I've put in mine. Did I read? Did I typo that? I must have. Ah, this is exciting TV, isn't it? Watching me type <laughs> in a number. <laughs> Chat amongst yourself, guys. I'll, I'll get this while you guys. I'm, have some I'm excited too. I want to find out what's going on in my car, but um, yeah. you know, try, really, try uh, just the last. See if it works on just the last day. Oh, sure. Yeah, good idea, brother. Good idea. Good I try. But it's really cool having this tool on the website because uh, if you want to learn more about your particular Saab, this is a great way to uh, try and uh, find out, you know, where some of the things were, one of the configurations is, where the uh, parts came from, stuff like that. It's kind of a cool feature, I think. Um, really awesome to have on the website there. Yeah. Thanks. I would say yeah, that, uh, yeah. It, it, it is really handy, and especially, like I said, there's um, – you know, links to our OSCs and, and some of our on online retailers as well. Boom. So there, there you is. go. There, there, there's your build data. Oh, wow. It tells us everything convertible. Ah, that awesome so, pink code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. B24. So, Cool. So I did. Yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet guys going to like knowing about this if they can get all this readout on their car. There's also a VIN decoder here so that if uh, it, it kind of takes it apart digit by digit by digit and tells you uh, kind of what the VIN means. So oh, that's kind of cool. I, that was kind of neat. This, I think, is pretty interesting is um, there is the reference library, Jeff. I think this is very helpful. Uh, so. I mean, if, if, if you want your driver's manual, you can go here and find that. Um, all kinds of good information here. Uh, a paint code chart for the 97X. I mean, that's kind of specific. Uh, mm -hmm. Oil guides, for example, here's a, they, this will lead you to a PDF, and there's the owner manual for uh, one of my cars. So, yeah, that's great. Download that, print that out, and you've got a factory owner's manual. That's pretty cool. I think uh, I think that's a nice thing. That's good stuff. I did have a question for you, Jeff. Um, I remember, you know, we're looking into the website here with all the parts and everything. I remember there being a Saab Parts for Life promotion at one point in time. And I is that still going on, or do is, is, is you have any information on that? Uh, I do. Yeah. I, unfortunately, that program ended uh, at the end of, uh, well, I, I, I'm unsure of the date it ended. I think it ended mm -hmm. the, in, in, at the end of last year. Oh, gotcha. Um, but it, actually, that was a, a, a very successful program that we had that was actually only launched and meant to run for 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, and it had, it had such success that we actually kept it rolling, I think, for almost four years. So, um, it's something that has ended, but you know, if you, if you were enrolled in it once, you're, you're still in it. So that's still, um, you're, that all that still is valid. Oh, gotcha. Um, but, 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 but even at, the, but even at the end of that, you know, um, at the, oh, you know, any part bought or installed at the OSD still carries a three year, uh, I believe it's three year, 36,000 mile warranty. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So I got some love for you on the screen there, Jeff. Uh, from Team Turner. Look at that. Um, <laughs> always a helpful guy. Isn't that great? That's nice. Um, yeah, and I have to agree with this. It's great that you guys are still out there and continuing to support our sobs. Um, Todd Tribble, who's on the show last week, asking, is that Dave going to appear for the older cars? How far back does that go, Jeff, on the VIN decode and, and all of that stuff? Well, unfortunately, there we got caught up in some of the GM scrubbing um in the um when they took over the data um in, in their world anything past 10 years old is 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 um they don't keep the data um, oh gotcha so uh so i i actually happened to notice it during i forget when it was it was the mid 2000s 2006 7 somewhere in that range one day all the information for my spgs there the next day it's gone Oh bummer! So there's still there'll still be a there'll still be a color code and you know basically engine uh, mm -hmm. and maybe serial numbers. Um, but uh, the older it gets, the less likely 
there is to be anything. And nothing without a 17 digit will be in there. Okay, so, and your question here, Doug, is, uh, yeah, this is a website. You can just go to uh, sobparts.com, and everything I'm showing you here, you'll be able to find online there. There's one other thing that I think is kind of cool, in addition to just this, the original Saab. That thing was so slick. You know, I think I read somewhere, Jeff, I don't know, do you know this? Did this particular car have the lowest drag coefficient of any vehicle? Is that what I remember? Uh, I'm, to be honest, Lee, I'm not sure there. I think I read I know, that somewhere. I, I, I know it, it's it's meant to be a cross section of, of an airplane wing. If you look yeah. at it, 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 that's exactly what it represents. So. Yeah, it sure does. So uh, anyway, this uh, this little feature is kind of nice. So you can create, uh, you put in your VIN number, give it a nickname, some other information, and then you can start building your maintenance log right there on that site. Oop, I just blew it up. There it is. Here's the maintenance log. Let me get back to that. Uh, so I just entered, uh, well, there's my commemorative edition and uh, so you can go in here and create a new entry and um, upload receipts images oh, wow. kind of the parts numbers so you are building an online maintenance log for your car that could be you know if you're like me i'm not great at keeping all my receipts but this might be a better way for me to do that so i think this is pretty cool jeff a nice little feature i'm not sure a lot of people knew about yeah, no, I and actually, it's actually it. something that, that that I utilize as well because I'm horrible with receipts. They 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 go into a large pile, and um, <laughs> yeah, I've got a big yeah. box. Yeah. So you know, uh, you are uh, a sob guy, you know, through and through for years. You've been doing uh, sob stuff, and uh, that includes some racing. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, in the uh, early 90s, actually, we started racing. Actually, we started that with an 85 SPG um, doing uh, SSA with showroom stock A in um, um, the SCCA, the, the Sports Car Club of America. Uh, we did a year of regional. Uh, I think we had, oh, man, I want to say. I think we had one win in that car and a couple of, uh, couple of thirds and maybe a fourth. Um, and then we came back actually the next year and ran a, a 92 SPG. And in that car we had, um, that was in the national circuit. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a car picture of that car here. The last picture I have of that car is um, not pretty. But um, the, um, and then we come back and ran a 92 uh, and basically ended up made the runoffs. Uh, we, we qualified, I think, third or fourth for the runoffs. Um, and then things went tragic. I think about the second lap at the, uh, gravity cavity on the back stretch of road Atlanta, as you come into where the old, I think turn 11 or 12 used to be um, at, at the end of the back stretch and the car went around and that, that was pretty much the end of our dream season there. But to make the runoffs was, it was a pretty good, um, pretty good piece, but there's been quite a few other pe people that were, um, very successful on campaign, you know, classic 900s and 99s. Over the years, you know, Jack Baxter and uh, ran a 99. There's several other people, um, you know, um, running the V4s and in, in the Sonnets and Jack Lawrence and those guys. So, well, so up on the there. screen right now is uh, one of your cars, Jeff, at uh, Talladega, where they did the long run, of course. Remember taking that yeah, shot that, out of yeah, the that, window? Yeah, that was actually. Uh, Pretty nice experience as, as part of the uh, 2016 owners convention we were honoring the uh, the club honored the um the long run which um mm -hmm. for any of you guys that don't know about that in um what was it 92 i think it was or and my age is showing here but um we took some nine thousands. i think it was 86 to be honest there we go and um down to talladega and we set uh, i think three international speed records at the time that uh it actually took chevrolet and corvette about 10 years to come up and break those records that yeah, must have oh, been wow. fun driving around that racetrack uh, it, it was it was um with with the banking it's it's quite odd actually you um if you don't take it at at least 70 80 miles an hour it just it just it tends to push you down the hill but, <laughs> that uh, sounds like fun <laughs> but at a hundred, it's, it's 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 just perfect. It's just like driving on a Sunday drive. Oh, and uh, Mark, look at this. He's a wagon guy as well. Yes, <laughs> I have a soft spot <laughs> wagons myself. I really do. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was a pick that up, and I've, I've had that for a few years. And um, 
I was actually bought that from a friend of mine and I was, I was fortunate to grab that one. And yet another one, you still have this one? Uh, unfortunately, no, that was my daughter's car. And then and she accidentally ran a red light and, uh, it gave its life for hers. Unfortunately. Oh, well, Ugh. that's what they do, right? That's what these cars were built for. They certainly saved my bacon and God love you for having one of my cars here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that was still actually still, still have the, still have the four door and still have the convertible. Actually, I've got it downstairs right now with the uh, interior all out, cleaning it all up and stuff. So, nice. you know, always something. Always something. You know, there's always a project. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what? I almost said the thing that 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 uh, I shouldn't be saying, and that is, you know, the old sob. Uh, something almost always broken. I got to stop saying that because it just gives people the wrong impression of our cars. But it, sometimes it feels like it's true. <laughs> yeah, knock on wood, uh, it, and I've, it, it's hard for me to believe, it, it, even thinking about it over the years. But there's, even as a technician, so you got to figure. I've, uh, um, drove some, you know, I won't say questionable cars, but you're always, you know, if you're driving a car home or driving around, there's always a, a chance of a breakdown somewhere. Yeah. And there has n never been a time um, that I was not able to drive one back. I, I've never gotten stranded. I, and I always love to tell a story. I was out way out on a test drive one day in an old eight valve and my fuel mileage guys will appreciate this. And uh, the, the gas cable broke and I'm about 20 miles from the dealership. So I pulled over on the side of the road and looked around and there was a pop. There was a tab off a Coke can. So I bent the tab, put it under the throttle, put the throttle at about 2000 RPM <laughs> and it all the way back to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about where you're headed next. So are there parts that you're trying to get in back into production and get on the market? What's, what's out there? What's happening with that? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually always, um, something we're, we're looking at mm -hmm. anything, you know, I tell people anything I can make a business case for that we can support, um, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to try to do it. So to, to the fact that uh, I think uh, here's your, it's been 18 months or so back, we actually started reproducing. We had classic 900 fenders restamped. Um, nice. We had um, there's some other body pieces that were also made. Um, right now I've been working for about the last, oh, it's almost seems like a year because it is, it has been a year uh, on fuel pumps. Um, and bringing all those, back, bringing all those back into stock, the, uh, the V6 fuel pumps, uh, it's hard to believe that TI Automotive, the largest manufacturer of fuel pumps in the world, quit making those pumps. Hmm. So um, we basically had to. Um, fortunately, they were they were you know they worked with us and we were able to you know get some um, new pumps built. But that's been a struggle. But hopefully we have to have hopefully we have hope to have those. And I'm thinking the next 60 to 90 days we'll have a complete line of pumps all across the board again. And uh, what is this uh, this thing that I, that we're looking at right here? Uh, that's actually something that I, I had put together for my wife's car just, just because, just because on, I know on the sports sedans, it, the, you know, I've always looked at that control module bolted to the engine and just thought that that just was never a good idea. Um, unfortunately that was one of GM's great ideas because it saves money. Um, you know, you, you think about, and it's easy to do the math. If you think about if the wiring harness is a foot or two foot or three foot sh shorter, you multiply that with the copper prices over, you know, yeah, let's say I get 10 it. million cars. Yeah. There's a lot of money there. Sure. Um, right. But this, this, this is something that I come up with it actually um, from a shells car. And I was talking with Tim, our uh, CEO about it one day. And he's like, Oh, well I should try one of those on, on my car. So I sent him the parts and he liked it. And this is one of the parts I was kind of uh, mentioning earlier that I kind of good naturally rib uh, Tim about, but, He's, he's real good about testing this stuff for me. And he put this on his car and he's like, you know, this is a pretty good idea. Maybe we should try to market this. And um, so here we are. It's basically a, a heat and vibration re reduction kit for the 03 through 11, 93 four cylinder sports sedans. And anybody yeah. that's ever seen one of those would, would understand, um, you know, why having a control module bolted to an engine is just not a good idea. Yeah. Right. Um, but the, the, the design parameter around, around this was that if, um, you know, the owner wanted to retain their factory cover, cause you know, Saab owners are very particular, um, no. ab about retaining the factory look. So it had to be something <laughs> that, um, you know, still would, would look factory. 
Um, there are some other there are some of the kits that have like a, a plate, um, and I've seen some different ones with. There's even one that actually that moves it out to the radiator, um, but you have to modify the wiring harness, and that's just a little bit beyond yeah. what the average yeah. consumer needs to be, you know, attempting in their driveway, especially with the connectors that are, that are in these um, these cars. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and going back to what I spoke to earlier, that you know there are different kits, and some of them come with a, a plate. And, and we thought about looking and actually looked at that, but looking at their tests and me running my test, I was achieving similar results. I see about a 50 degree reduction in surface temperature, mm -hmm. um, which is equivalent to about what they were seeing. So, um, and without the added cost, it, it's really, it was six and one half a dozen the other. You're really not ever going to be able to reduce the, the heat soak that you're going to get in that area. Mm -hmm. um, the, the plate would, would, you know, would reject some of it, but it's still not going to do anything short of, you know, short of encompassing it or moving it out of that area. You're, you're mm -hmm. really not ever going to do much for the heat. So. Gotcha. Well, so, so I'm not great to see. So you yeah. engineered a solution there. Way to go, brother. Uh, I don't know, know that I, I particularly did it. I mean, the, the <laughs> idea, I, I had kind of seen the idea out there and just, um, went something of what I, what I thought was as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Always the best. Hey, sometimes so uh, it works best. Sometimes it does. So <laughs> we're going to see you. Uh, Mark and I are both going to be at SOC. You're going to be up at mm -hmm. SOC. Uh, tell us what uh, Oreo is going to be doing there. Yeah, we're going to. Well, what we're doing was similar. I don't know if any of you, our, our audience, was at um, Sobs of Carlisle. That's another a big event we attend every year. Um, but we'll we'll have a booth. We'll be telling uh, people like you were just showing there earlier about our website and how to get registered and some of the resources that they have there. The, the uh, reference library will be in one of the very um, under under underutilized reference um, pieces that we have. I'll just be honest. There's a lot of information and and we add stuff daily. There could be stuff there tomorrow that's not there today. Okay. Um, well, I can say this: it won't happen tomorrow because I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> um, so. Yes. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a, you know, a stand similar to this with, with um, my wife and myself will probably be there. Tim uh, Colbeck will also be there. I know he's um, um, getting over some, um, he had just had some surgery, but um, he's pledged to come up and, and hang out with us. So that'll, it'll be a good time. He always likes to, um, you know, commiserate with the uh, owners. Well, that's great. So we're going to look forward to seeing you. And well, looking forward to seeing everybody up at the Saab Owners Convention in Albany, New York, real soon. Jeff, thanks. Uh, great to have you here. What a good resource for all of us Saab guys. I hope lots of people learned something tonight. We'll drop by the site. Again, it's SaabParts.com. I got that right, correct? SaabParts.com? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's correct. Awesome. Okay, that's great. So I hope we'll see you up there in New York. Awesome. Yes, we will. We'll be up there. We'll see you. I'll be up there Wednesday. If anybody shows up on Wednesday, I'll be there. All right. We'll see you there. Thanks for joining us, Jeff. Thanks, yep, Jeff. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Mark. We appreciate you having us very much. Thanks. You mm -hmm. bet. You bet. You bet. All right, Mark. So uh, looking forward to uh, New York. But next week, mm -hmm. um, we are going to be meeting a guy who uh, specializes in used parts. And uh, he just bought a collection of 34 sobs that he's going to be dismantling oh, wow. and making available. So we will uh, meet with him and then talk more about all of that coming up next week. Anything on your calendar that you want to share about, Mark? Oh, nothing too exciting coming up besides the owner's convention. Really, that's the main event I'm looking for. And of course, you know, everyone is going to be looking forward to the holiday this weekend because it's July 4th. I mean, we're going to be celebrating the birth of this country. I mean, come on. We're, we're going to be having a lot of independence things happening. Lots of grills going, lots of fireworks going off. Maybe a little bit of color showing here and there. Looking forward to having a awesome weekend. And I hope you will enjoy it from behind the windshield of your sob. So we'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everyone.